Welcome back to another Colorful Keto with Dory. So we're just going to do a quickie recipe tonight. We're going to make a quick bulletproof coffee together. And I'm going to show you guys my favorite flavor combination. We're going to do a butterscotch brandy bulletproof coffee. So for the coffee base, you can use whatever. For me, I use instant coffee. We're an instant coffee house. So the first thing I'm going to put in my blender is my coffee mix. And then to that, bulletproof coffee just means added fat. So a lot of people use a lot of different things. Coconut oil, MCT oil, butter, heavy whipping cream. Any combination of these things is okay and whatever you like is okay for you. For me, I like to use coconut oil and heavy whipping cream. Now, when I make my video, people always say, what, no butter? Um, butter is made from heavy whipping cream. So I skip the middleman and I, I just don't like the texture of butter in mine. But if you guys like it, feel free to add that. So then the next thing I'm going to add is a bit of coconut oil because that's what I like. And then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. And also, I don't add any sweetener to my coffee. That's, again, a personal preference. If you like sweetener in your coffee, you can have it. I just don't add it in my Bulletproof coffee because I don't like it. So then we're going to add just a little bit of butterscotch flavoring. And honestly, just a little drop. And then the same with the brandy. Because I really like the combination of the butterscotch and the brandy flavor together. And I don't know, I'm curious if you guys have tried different flavors of Bulletproof Coffee yet. It was one of those things in the beginning that I thought was going to be really, really yucky. So I was leery to try it. And now I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with Bulletproof Coffee, I can't lie. So into that we're adding the water for our coffee. And that's it. Now if you guys are curious why I'm putting it into a blender, it's because then the oil won't re-separate. So we're just going to put it inside of the bullet and we're going to give it a quick blend. Now, if you don't have one or if you don't want to do this step, you don't have to, but you're going to want to remix your coffee as you drink it because the oil will separate from it. And giving it a quick blend will make it really nice and frothy as well. So I'll... Pour that in here so you can see. So it makes it nice and frothy instead of having the oil separate. And then it's got our butterscotch brandy flavor in there. Now lots of times I'll make a really nice whipping cream for on top, but for today this is just my basic everyday bulletproof coffee. If I'm feeling really fra fancy, I'll put a flavored whipping cream and a little bit of sparkle or something like that. But this is just my everyday quick go-to bulletproof coffee. So then what we're gonna do for today's recipe is we are, it's pork war. So we're doing a pork sausage recipe and we're going to make a cheese and pork sausage stuffed spaghetti squash. So, just before I got all set up, I used the same pork sausage that we used yesterday, and I just stripped it out of the casing and I browned it up. And then I pre steamed out one spaghetti squash. Now, we're going to spoon out the majority of the spaghetti squash so that we've got more room for meat. So, we're just going to loosen it out. And I'm going to take a little bit out so we have more room for the meat inside of there. And I'm just going to grab a bowl to pop that into. Now in my house I love, love, love spaghetti squash. Nobody else is as huge a fan as I am, but they'll eat a little bit of it. So I scoop the majority of the spaghetti squash out so that I can freeze it for another meal for me. 
because I know that they will have a small serving with my meat, with their meat, but they don't want lots. So if spaghetti squash is a huge hit all the way around the board at your house, I wouldn't scoop as much of it out, but you're still going to want to take a little bit out so that you've got some room to fill up the inside of the squash. Okay, so I took about half out so that we've got room to fill up. And then we're just going to spoon some of the cooked sausage. And you want to make sure you get some of the nice rendered juice in there as well so that it'll soak up the flavor. And we're just going to fill them both up with the sausage. And like I said, you don't want to miss out on getting the nice rendered fat in there too. Hey, hon. Okay. Um, about 10 minutes. I'm just in the middle of doing the live right now. Okay. So I'm going to let you take a peek there. So I've just got that filled in with the sausage. And we're going to put a bit of leftover marinara sauce that we had from the other night's recipe. And I'll hold it up so you guys can see. And I'm just going to spread the marinara on top. And then we're going to add a bit of mozzarella on top. And I have some mixed, I had some mixed marble and some mozzarella. So we're going to do a little bit of both just because. Okay. Okay, oh, make a mess there. Okay, so that's what they look like. They're all nice and stuffed. I'm just going to pop them into the oven to broil for a minute. Oh, it looks like my broiler's not working. I'm gonna broil it in this one. Okay. Okay. So with the extra zucchini, extra spaghetti squash, um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, it's a really, really great base for any of your pasta dishes, but I've also seen really great recipes for things like um, fritters and tots and hash browns. So for something like that, you're going to want to take your cooked zucchini, squeeze out the extra moisture, and then you're gonna add egg and cheese and whatever you want to glue it together and make either a hash brown or a tot. So I don't know if you guys have experimented a lot with spaghetti squash, but it's definitely one I use a lot of at, at my house. <coughs> and I wanted to take a moment to ask you guys, because I know some of you, you know, don't join me every night, but every couple of nights, if there's any particular snacks that you guys are dying to have anything that we need to cover. Um, next on my list is Keto Cheetos. <laughs> I, I saw a post and someone wanted Cheetos and I saw a really cool recipe for Keto Cheetos. So I'm, one of my girlfriends made it and I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit. So I'm thinking probably Friday night we might do some Cheetos. But I was curious what other kind of snacks. I think for Friday night, we're going to do snack wars so that everybody can try out some new interesting snacks. So if you guys want to leave comments, what I didn't know before that I know about Instagram now is when you comment on the live video, it comes as a message to me. So if it's after the live is done, you guys can still comment on it. It'll just come to me directly as a message and it won't show up as a comment in the live feed. So if there's an idea that you have of a snack that you want, let me know. Um, the other thing that I've been really, really tempted to try is sponge toffee. Now that's something I had a lot as a kid as a comfort food and I'd really like to try a sugar-free version of that. So let me know what you guys think about that idea too. I'm just going to make sure my oven is on here broiling so that we're... I don't know if I actually turned it to the right one here. There we go. There we go. Okay. 
And I was going to do Cheeto Ketos tonight, but then Wednesday happened, and it's, you know, way past the time I should be finished doing this to hang out with you guys. So, but I'm definitely curious. Um, tomorrow's Thursday, so we have one more day in between um, snacks, and I'd like to know what you guys want to have tomorrow. So anything you can pick. Oh, hey, Dr. Barry's here. Um, we're deciding what we're going to have for tomorrow's uh, Keto Wars, Dr. Barry. Tonight is um, Pork War, and we're making a sausage stuffed cheese spaghetti squash. And on Friday, we're going to make Cheeto Ketos and snacks. So I want everybody to get their snack list ready and give me a few ideas, and we're going to try some cool new snacks. And it doesn't have to be something I've tried before. We're going to try out new recipes. So... Um, while we're waiting for that to warm up, um, I thought we would just talk a little bit about alternatives for my favorite, spaghetti squash. Um, we were just talking about being able to do fritters or hash browns or anything like that with them. They do make a really nice pasta because they come out thin like an actual noodle. Now, if you don't care for the flavor of them, then that's why I would use them for a sauce. Um, secret tip I'll give you for the kids. If they don't like it, and I know it sounds weird, but I would add just a little bit of food color to it and change the look of it and see if they'll try it then. Add a little cheese, add a little cream cheese. And sometimes when we're trying new ways of eating, we have to introduce the same food multiple times in different ways. Um, at my house, I had a little bit of a struggle with the cauliflower. That one was a little bit of a leap for our house. Um, we used to eat a lot, a lot of potatoes. And I found some really, really good cauliflower dishes. The loaded cauliflower is fantastic. And when I make that, no one at my house misses potatoes. So I want you guys to get an idea of what sort of solutions you want because I already know how to make what we're looking for but I want to help you guys eat what you want so I'm going to grab out our spaghetti squash because this one was a super quick we already had the spaghetti squash warmed up and the sausage sausage was already cooked so this honestly is a meal that you can prepare in advance and make for five minutes so this one's great on nights when you're shopping you're running errands your kids have activities this is a five minutes to table recipe. Okay. Okay, so we're not quite as melted as I want. I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for about 40 seconds there. And when we do the Cheetos, we're gonna do a couple different flavors. I'm, I'm going to do a Frank's Red Hot and a jalapeno cheddar and then I was thinking about doing a, a white cheddar one for the kids that maybe will be a fun color because eh, why not I find if you're trying to introduce different foods especially to young kids getting them involved in making it really really helps with their willingness to try it it was fun it was exciting they had a good time while they were making it so they're a lot more likely to give that a shot. And I will share a secret with you guys. My fiance's daughter is the pickiest child on the planet. <laughs> I, I swear she doesn't like any food, any food at all. And she visits us in the summer and she's already excited to come and learn new recipes. So sometimes with kids just making it a little bit different and a little bit fun is all you need to do. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what we've got going on here. So this is our one dish meal. Now, if you do a separate carb dish side for your family, I, I make either a pasta or a rice for them for an option. And sometimes they'll choose it and sometimes they'll surprise me and they won't. So what I would say is transitioning... I started eating this way and as I make better choices, I'm finding my family kind of carries along suit and makes the small choices with me. So I'm going to tell you guys that you don't have to stress. If you are doing it alone and your family's not with you, they might. They might hop on board. Start making fun, interesting food 
and who knows who's going to come along with you. So thanks for hanging out with me tonight, guys. And oh, yay. Okay, so when you guys have ideas about what we're going to make tomorrow, send me a message and we'll do something fun tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a great night.